Hello and welcome to my Titan Vice All Missions Guide. This guide is going to show you all of the missions in GTA Vice City that have been modified by this mod and also detail the differences between the what you would expect to see in the mod versus what you would expect in the vanilla game. This guide is not a speedrun and it is also not a 100% walkthrough or anything like that. It will be solely doing the missions that have been modified but I will hopefully show you a reasonably efficient order to complete the missions. With that all being said, let's get started. I poked my head out of the gutter for one freaking second and paid shovel shit in my face. Go get some sleep. What are you gonna do? Drop by your office tomorrow and we can start sorting this mess out. Have I done this before? I can't remember. So as you can see on the screen here, there are important things to know. And that is that Tommy has had his Weetabix this morning and you are now able to sprint infinitely and while holding heavy weapons. The, especially the infinite sprint is an extremely beneficial thing to us as you can break a lot of missions with it, essentially. And it also means that you don't have to mash your keyboard too much. Also, this mod has snow, as you can see. Snow in Miami is a little questionable, but roll with it. This is absolutely terrible in terms of trying to control your vehicle, so just keep that in mind. It's basically like rain, but worse. I would strongly advise grabbing this Uzi early on and possibly the armor as well if you want to be safe because this first mission is going to start off very, <laughs> um, what's the word? It, it, it's going to come at you thick and fast, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you're going to need a weapon to defend yourself even in the first mission. So this Uzi works pretty well. This mod also includes some troll moments. One of them is that if you drive into this marker without stopping, you'll actually fail the mission because you've essentially ruined Raphael's shops. Uh, shop, excuse me. That is in sort of a nod and a middle finger to speedrunners, which is also a very common tactic in, uh, in this mod. Something else that I forgot to mention at the start is that this is currently being played on patch 2.25, which is the current patch and likely going to be current patch for a long time, as development on this mod is pretty much finished. So this is what you need the gun for. I would recommend lining up against this hedge, as there are three guys here with M4s, so using the Uzi to shoot them is a lot better. This guy's also hidden behind this corner, so just watch out. If you get too close, Mercedes will try and punch them, and as you can imagine, if she tries to punch them and they have M4s, she'll die very quickly. Back alley brawl starts off fairly normal. The only change in this little section 
is that the guards will shoot you um, as soon as you exit the Malibu Club. Usually this only happens if you have a wanted level, but this just happens no matter what in this mod. Just try not to let them pop your tires because that can be quite an issue. The next difference is that the chef on Ocean Drive has actually moved positions. He is now not in a place where you can run him over normally, but you can just take this route instead and kill him. Then the major change is that, as you can see, once you go to deal with Lance here, these guys all have very high level shotguns. So I would recommend shooting these two with the M4. The other guy doesn't matter as he only has a pistol. And hey, is that a shaft driving off with Lance's car? If you line this up properly, you can actually snipe this guy before he drives away. It's a little tricky to pull off, but with some practice, you should be able to hit it fairly consistently. If you don't, then you can just chase the car and eventually he stops at the pizza place up north and you can just kill him there and take Lance's car instead. Now, all you need to do is pick up Lance and head back to the hotel. Jury Fury is a only slightly modified mission, but the one change you need to be very careful for is that these guys now have bodyguards with guns. So if you get too close, you will be shot very quickly. So make sure you take out the bodyguard first. sends his regards. This lady's shotgun has a sniper rifle built into it, I swear down. Make sure you get rid of her because she is very dangerous. You can get some more Uzi ammo and also some more armor here if you took any damage or a low on ammo. A very nice change in this mod is that phone calls are actually skippable. So you can just press F or hold it or whatever, and you can skip calls instantly and it still counts them as being taken, which is very nice because phone calls are slow and annoying.
This mission is extremely trivial with a decent weapon, such as the M4 or the shotgun. All that you need to do is head towards this fence. Usually it's complete chaos with molotovs and stuff being thrown at you. But if you just stand near this fence, which is deliberately being placed to block you off, you can take just a step back and aim it so your gun goes through the fence and you can actually blow these things up remotely. You can use either the shotgun or the M4. It's completely up to you. I just used whatever weak ammo I had left. Now we're on to Cortez's missions. First up is Treacherous Swine. This one is pretty easy. The major difference is that, well, there's two major differences. One is that the guards that are defending Go Gonzalez have quite a lot of, you know, enhanced guns, let's say. I think they all have M4s, something like that. But so do we, so we'll be mostly fine. Number two is that you actually get an increased wanted level, so the usual speedrun strategy of just grabbing one police bribe and driving back doesn't really work. So here you can just pull out your M4 and shoot Gonzalez. If you shoot him in a limb, such as an arm, leg, head, etc., you can actually critical hit him, which will kill him instantly. Next up is the first assassination mission, the first optional mission that we're doing, which is roadkill. This one is pretty tough because the guy is in like a pizza hot ring racer and it's extremely fast. So I definitely recommend having a fast car here because he also only delivers 15 items. So you really don't have a lot of time to chase him down. He drives in a random direction, so you can kind of get screwed here, but most of the time you should be able to find him and he might even crash if you're lucky. In this mission, Mole Shootout, if you do it the fast way, you're going to take a lot of damage, so I would definitely recommend having full health and armor, or as close to as possible for this. So all that you need to do is jump down. If you drop off that ledge, you can actually press your jump key to skip the falling animation. And this guy with the Molotovs is very annoying, so watch out for him. If you're going to die due to the fire, you know, you get set on fire and your, your health is going to run out because you only have like 50 health or whatever, you can actually get on a vehicle and that will stop you burning. So that's a little tip for you. Also, make sure you pay and spray here because if you go back with your wanted level, even though the game doesn't really force you to technically, you'll fail the mission. You 
unlucky. There's also this very handy health spawn right next to where Cortez is, so you can use that for these missions as well. If you need armor, there is actually some in this little white building here. All you need to do is just go inside and head up the stairs and there's armor at the top. Unlucky. I'd recommend parking your bike out of the way near this blue door, as otherwise it will despawn once Lance gets in. And as you can tell, the weapon that you have at your disposal isn't that good. It's, uh, it's camera, it won't do a lot of damage. But there is actually a kind of hidden gun spawn, and it's the usual spawn that you would expect. All that you need to do is go and grab it, and it's just over this wall. So with good timing and good, good gameplay skill, you can actually ramp off this wall and grab it. This is very annoying to do, because for some reason on this mod, wheelies are like impossible. I don't know why. But yeah, if you pick this up, you don't even actually have to grab it. It will just give you ammo for your M4, which is a much better weapon than the, the assault rifle that the game tries to give to you. So this mission is on a timer, the same way it is in the vanilla game, but there are some interesting points to know because they have A, upgraded weapons, B, some of the vehicles are bulletproof so you can't blow them up prematurely, and C, there are more spawns, which you'll see later. Oh, and D, Diaz got a boo-boo on his knee and is feeling delicate, so he starts with reduced health. If you need health, you can grab it here, but you should have plenty by now. You can also farm ammo from your teammates by killing them, but if you're going to kill them, make sure you wait until the, the first group of enemies have spawned so you can actually see them on the map, the yellow dots. And grab as much ammo as you can, because you'll need it for later missions. These guys that are about to spawn in this van to the north, you would usually blow up this van before it gets to its destination. You can't do that because it's bulletproof, but you can snipe guys out of the van prematurely. You can kill a couple of them early. For these final guys, just be careful because there are three or four extra guys with M4s, I think, on the roof in front of you. So just watch out for those. I 
live! Take heads, and it's all down to you. What is your name? Tommy. I see you soon, amigo, I think. These are the brand Shit, where's that guy, Lance? So, we're done with Cortez for now, we'll be going back to see him later, but in the meantime, we're going to do some missions for Ricardo Diaz. This one is the chase, the first one, and it's pretty similar to the usual mission, but does have some changes that are important to note that we'll get into in a second. Once you begin the chase with this guy, just watch out behind you, as there is a guy right there who will shoot you, but as long as you hang on the right hand side, he will never be any sort of threat to you. In the meantime, you can just sprint past this guy, just make sure to not sprint too fast, because you might soft lock, so just be careful. But then hop down here, and wait for him to get to his destination. Once you gain control of Tommy again, you can actually steal this car before he drives off, and drive it to this wall in front of you. You can be safe and kill this guy if you'd like to. And then just wait at the wall. And your mission objective will start running towards you. Make sure you block the driver's side against the, the wall there on the left. And be moving in the process of moving when he's getting in. This will make him try to hijack you. But he can't hijack you because the driver's door is blocked and you're moving. So instead what happens is he just gets into the passenger seat and you can actually use that to just drive to your destination. Or drive him to his destination rather. I would heavily recommend keeping this vehicle. Even if you don't do that strategy, you can grab this vehicle right here once you're done. As you can use it for the next mission we'll be doing, which is Waste a Wife. And this vehicle makes this mission so much easier. This vehicle has the heavy property, which means that if you ram into a car such as Mrs. Dawson's car, you will flip her extremely easily, which makes this mission really trivial. The difference, as you can see, is uh, she has her partner with her, and he will shoot you, so it's all the more vital that you kill her quickly and efficiently. Oh as you can see, you can flip her really easily, and then just make yourself scarce. Easy mission. If you somehow lost that vehicle, that's okay, this mission is doable without it, it's just a lot slower. All that you need to do instead is just keep ramming the vehicle. You can even shoot Mr. Dawson or whoever this guy is out if you shoot exactly one bullet and kill him. If you damage the car at all, you'll fail the mission. But the issue is that he will respawn and continue shooting you anyway. So the strategy is very much just do it the intended way. Ram into her, do damage. If you take too much damage from the vehicle, you can just grab another one and continue until she sets on fire. Back to Diaz now, and this is Phnom Penh. Doing this the intended way, as we're not doing any kind of major glitches or anything to break these missions, because I'm showing you that, you know, it's possible to do it without exploits or glitches. 
This mission is really tough. This mission is easily like the top three hardest missions in the game. As you can see, you have a lot of heli health, but that is not going to save you. These guys, a lot of them have M60s and they can kill you so quick. So you probably will need to practice this mission, learn which guys have the M60s and take them out as soon as possible. You can follow my kill order to make it a bit easier. Once you're off the helicopter, you've got the hardest bit out of the way, but you're not out of the woods yet. Do not sprint into here as you will die very quickly. Instead, slowly take them out one by one as again, some of them have M60s. As you can see, the briefcase is in an elevated position, so you'll need to head back downstairs and grab the PCJ that is spawned here. You'll need to drive this up the stairs and use it as a ramp to get up to where the briefcase is. Optionally, you can also use an explosive barrel. You can push it over there and use that as a ramp as well, but that's a little riskier. This is the intended way. Very important for this mission, do not take Diaz's car, because if you drive it to the docks, you will fail the mission because Diaz gets angry at you for repeatedly stealing his car. Instead, you can take any other car, either one that you find on the street, or if you'd like a fixed, consistent spawn, there is a banshee just over this wall. This place is heavily guarded, so make sure you take out the guards, as you will need to do a little bit of parkour to get to your destination.
as you can see, there is a new gate here, which is blocking you from usually getting um, getting over to where you can, you know, sort of teleport in. But you can actually do some parkour if you sprint jump over. You can actually get up these boxes. So if you fall off, it's okay. You can just try again. I had snow here, so it makes it a little harder. But yeah, as long as you're over the fence, you can just press F and warp straight into the boat, exactly like you would in a speed run. The reason why we're not just lowering the thing down, even though we've killed everyone, so you should just be able to press the lever and continue, is it actually spawns a load more guys. So we're skipping these spawns by doing this. This is optional, but I'd recommend getting in this boat after you pass the fastest boat and reparking it just out of the way, because then we will be able to reuse it after the end of this next mission. Otherwise, it won't be here. Be very careful with taking the fastest route on supply and demand, which is all the way north on the west side of the golf course, because there are two guys, possibly more actually, but two at least, with M60s that will kill you very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. So if you're unsure, just take this route instead, as this is a slightly slower route, but it's pain-free. These guys coming up are also heavily armed, so as soon as you gain control, take out these gunners as quickly as you can, because otherwise they will fuck you up. Prioritize killing this first guy on the jetty, as he is heavily armed as well. So try and get him as he has an M60. And then turn your attention to the helicopter, as this guy on the left side of the helicopter is also very dangerous. Once the heli is dealt with, turn around, kill this last guy. I would recommend not killing the driver here, as if you do, the boat will obviously stop moving and Lance will hit it, which can make him either go off course or flip and kill you entirely. If you saved the boat earlier, you can now use it to take a very quick route back to Cortez for the next mission. This mission forces snow upon you, which is pretty annoying, so just keep that in mind. You can brake without sliding too much by holding brake and handbrake at the same time. It makes it a little easier, but it's still not easy by any means.
So here we would usually shoot the gunner, which would make the, the driver of the tank get out, but that isn't possible in this mod. So instead we're going to do the old faithful boomer trick, which is to park our PCJ right here, and this instead allows us to steal the tank. Now, a very important thing is don't go to the regular destination. As you can see on the minimap, the destination has actually been changed and it's actually on the eastern island. So do your best to turn around. I take a questionable route here, but you shouldn't ideally just turn around, you know, sort of turn it left and do a U-turn and then head towards the northern bridge. When you're on this bridge, be very careful, as if you hit the wrong thing or you grind against the right side and hit your own door, which can happen, it can actually either flip you or send you completely flying off the bridge into the ocean. So just keep that in mind. You, you can't go too slow because the timer is pretty tight and you can also use the cannon to shoot behind you to gain some extra speed should you need it. Once you finish the mission, there is a very handy PCJ spawn here for you. Just be careful of the cops surrounding it, as you'll get a wanted level should you steal it. Now, while we're back on this island, we may as well do a couple of Avery missions, as they're pretty trivial. So here, most of the usual methods are patched and there are billboards blocking you, as you can see. So we're going to have to take a slightly different route to kill this guy. Grab a bike and take it over to where this wooden bridge is. And with just the correct lineup, you can actually ramp off the shrubbery there to get on top of the bridge. And then you can drive over and ruin this guy's day. Next up is Demolition Man. If you didn't like this mission playing it as a kid because it was so difficult, um, I'm sure you're not surprised when I say that it's even more difficult in this mod. The main difference is that you have an RC plane instead of a helicopter, which makes dropping the bombs significantly more tight in terms of the timing and window that you have to drop them. The main issue is that you can get kind of screwed with glitches so there's a chance that when you drop the bombs, they'll hit like an invisible hitbox on top of the barrels. And that you have to fly over them to pick them up again. And that is just a huge pain. And there is also a bug, as you can see there, where you press the button to drop the bomb and just nothing happens. That's the best case scenario if you're going to hit a bug, because at least then you can try again without having to pick up the bomb. But yeah, the, the best strategy is to just line yourself up Get a little bit of height as you can only drop bombs once you're in the in midair and then drop the bomb. Also, the third level or the third bomb you should do last 
it's technically a bit more efficient and will give you a bit more time. Because the mission ends as soon as you drop the final bomb. You don't have to leave the building or anything. You can just blow up inside the building at the end. And the third bomb, second one from the top, is actually the furthest away from the staircase. So you save the most amount of time not having to backtrack for that one. and messing around, I'll bust your wise ass toy. to the payphone next to the mall in Washington. Next up is 2-bit hit. This one is thankfully a lot easier. All you need to do is get your ass down to the usual spot and the difference you'll see in just a few minutes. If you head around the back on the eastern side here, you can see that there is a Boxville that's been parked to try and stop you from just simply killing him over the wall. But if you kill a guy first, it will mean that they've spotted you. If you don't kill a guy first, then and they don't spot you, and then you kill the guy, you'll fail the mission because there's no way that they could know that it was a Cuban. Even though they probably don't know anyway. Also, don't try and do this, you'll get stuck. Just go around, it's, it's not worth the two seconds that it takes to go around. But yeah, so the entire point of this mission is that you have to get spotted as a Cuban first, so they think that the Cubans killed the guy. So as soon as you kill a guy and it says, congratulations, they've spotted you or whatever, not congratulations, but you know what I mean. Then you can go ahead and throw a grenade over, kill the guy, and then just get out of Little Haiti. There is a shortcut you can drive north to get out of Little Haiti a bit quicker, but I just brain farted and couldn't find it. So you can just drive north here and you'll pass the mission anyway. So next up, we're going to do Death Row. As you're right next to the police station there, you can grab a police helicopter if you'd like, because it's makes it trivializes this mission, essentially. But if you don't have a helicopter, then I'll show you where to get one. You can just head over these ramps here, and there is...
extra handy dandy ramps with a like a BJ Smith billboard or whatever it is. You go across them, there is actually another police helicopter on this roof. VCS players will be very happy to see it. But yeah, if you grab the helicopter and use it for this mission, it makes it 10 times easier. So do not fly to the northeast corner because that will get you killed because there are guys with M60s in the spot where you would usually do it if you're a speedrunner. Instead, park all the way in the southwestern corner. You can re-enter your helicopter to be safe as it might despawn if you don't. So unless you know what you're doing, I'd recommend re-entering it. You can then sprint, kill these guys. One on top of the little digger thing there at the excavator or whatever it is. Three more dudes and then go and save Lance. Careful planning blown to shit. Thanks to you. You screwed up real good, Lance. You killed my brother. What do you expect me to do? Mow his lawns? We're gonna have to take out that prick Diaz before he takes us out. You okay to use a gun? Sure. I guess. Nice to see you too. Let's get out of here. Once Lance starts following you, make sure you kill the guys in front of you and hold sprint the entire time because if you do, Lance will sprint right after you to follow you so he won't get stuck or anything. Head back to the helicopter, and it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Next up is Rub Out, where we finally take over the mansion. This one is tough, so but if you follow what I do, it should be significantly easier. Make sure you use your M60 and kill all the guys. Don't worry about the pedestrians, it's the guys with the the you know the Vasetti gang members that you want to kill. This guy has an M60, this guy has an M60. You don't really need to worry about them too much, but it's Lance that you really need to worry about. Drop down, kill this guy. This next guy you can just run right past, it doesn't really matter, but you can kill him for prosperity's sake if you want to, to grab ammo and stuff. Down on the left here, there is a place where you can get health should you need it, but be careful, it's guarded by more M60 dudes. But there is health there, but if you don't need health, you can just head straight across to the other side and enter in. Once you're inside, you need to be extra careful because these guys have M60s, this guy does. This next guy doesn't, so you can be okay. But the next guy does. As you can see, he took away my armor so fast there. And then head up these next set of stairs to this level. Kill this guy. I think I'm on the level, wrong level here, actually. Yes, I am. Go up one more level. Do as I say, not as I do. And kill all of these guys that you see. Two guys here. There's a guy on the opposite side. There's two guys at the entrance. And sometimes there's a guy on the stairs like this. Make sure you kill all of them because they all have M60s. Then hug the right side and keep hugging the wall all the way here. Don't sprint, especially on these stairs. And just slowly walk around while hugging the wall. You can actually skip the trigger to spawn Diaz and trigger the boss fight. And you can just head all the way around like this into his office. If the game would let me move, there we go. And there's Diaz, he's still spawned in, but his AI isn't active because we never triggered the cutscene. 
and you can just kill him just like that and skip the entire boss fight. Next up is Shakedown. You only have three minutes, which is not a lot of time, so I'd recommend taking a helicopter. If you don't have one, there's a Maverick on the roof of Diaz's mansion. The key difference with this mission is when you shoot the windows, a guy spawns with a heavy weapon that's going to try and kill you. So what I would do is I would recommend destroying the windows only when you're a set distance away and then get ready to kill the guy as soon as he spawns so he doesn't catch you out. So these guys you can, or these windows you can destroy as easily as you like because the guy only spawns once you've destroyed all of the windows in a set. So as you'll see here, I'm going to destroy these last two so there is one window remaining. Then I'm gonna go ahead and buy some guns. Might as well buy sniper rifle, grenades, and some armor. Then I'm gonna hop out and destroy this one once I'm far enough away. You see, there he is, and you can kill him. These next ones, you can just throw grenades up. So you don't even have to deal with the guy. I don't even know if one spawns because I've never dealt with him. These grenades are fairly tricky throws, but you have plenty and you can keep buying more if you miss, so. And then just kill these last three windows. And here we're going to abuse the autosave pretty heavily. The game autosaves every single time you complete a mission, as long as you're on foot. And as you can see, you have six stars here. But if you load your autosave, which should be in slot seven, it actually removes your wanted level. So there you go. Easy way to get rid of the six stars. Next up is Autoside, the third payphone assassination mission. We deliberately only did this mission once we'd already bought a sniper rifle, because this sniper pickup here only gives you one bullet. As you can see, we went from 40 to 41. And shooting this first guy with only one bullet is remarkably difficult. So instead, we're going to use our 41 bullets instead, which makes it way easier. Once you've killed that first guy, make sure to go north before you head towards the east side of this dude. Because otherwise he'll spot you from really far away and he'll start driving away before you even have a chance to kill him. So, if you approach from the north, you can shoot this guy out of his car before he even manages to get away. Obviously, you can still chase him, but you're quite limited on time, so just keep that in mind. So, I'd heavily recommend spawn killing as many of these dudes as you can. Especially that guy, because he's in a security car, which is very... What's the word I'm looking for? Very bulky. It's very difficult to kill him unless you spawn kill him. This third set of guys, one of them has a shotgun. I don't know what the other guys have, but just use your M60 and nuke this thing instantly. Do not even fuck, attempt to fuck with these guys. And then head straight back down south again.
This fourth guy is still on a boat with a slightly moved position. I believe he actually moves, which is pretty interesting. But depending on where you get to him, you can still just nuke him with the M60, or if he's too far away, just use your sniper rifle. This last guy, dealing with him in snow is a huge pain in the ass. He's a proper cheater and spots you from miles away. And he also drives in a random direction really fast on the PCJ. So just do your best, but I can't really give you any ways to cheese this guy because it's basically just try and catch up to him and kill him. I so say he's actually in a Deluxo in this, which is even better because obviously you can't really snipe him off a bike or he can't fall off or anything. As you see, I actually had to switch cars because I got wrecked so hard by the police. So I barely make this. I have like two seconds left when he dies. But yeah, you can always get rid of the police by picking up bribe stars or pain spraying as well. That's another option. Yeah, here I just get out and just say it's a Hail Mary and thank, thank God he got stuck. So yeah, this mission sucks. Fuck this mission. All hands on deck is pretty standard. It's another auto scroller, so you can't really speed it up. You can in some places, but for all intents and purposes, it's an auto scroller. The guys have increased weapons and there are snipers on the bridges that you have to deal with. But aside from that, there's nothing really super hard to it. Just be very careful. For some reason on this mission, if I, when, I, when I was doing this in practice and recording this footage, I actually failed the mission twice because <laughs> For some odd reason, if you use the camera that was given to you in Guardian Angels and you take a picture during this mission, you'll just crash the game. So keep that in mind, because that's how I failed the first two times. These helis are also upgraded because they're both hunters, but you can just shoot the driver out, they're not really any threat to you. Once you gain control, I'd recommend heading south and then immediately west towards the south side of Prawn Island. Ignore what I do here, I just go the wrong way and get confused, but yeah. Getting five stars and being in a boat in the middle of nowhere is not great. If you were to press F to exit your boat now, you could get an autosave and load it, which would get rid of your wanted level. But the issue is that the boat would despawn from underneath you because, you know, you've loaded the save. So you would just drown and lose all of your weapons, which we don't want to do. So instead, head due south, and when you get onto the, you know, around the back of Prawn Island, just beach yourself and go and buy the film studios. 
and then you can save and load your game. So it's time to do asset missions. Very exciting. Film studios is pretty rough, but I'll show you some methods to make these missions much easier. If you need armor, you can get it right outside the film studios right there. If you have something like an M60 or an M4 here, you can actually snipe this guy out of his car really early before he has a chance to get away. And this will skip this chase sequence where he has a clown car and drops off a load of dudes to try and kill you. But if you miss it, you can just chase him down as normal. The hell are you doing? You should have stayed at home today. Can you believe this asshole? Hey Mercedes. Hey Tommy, you want a party? Not now, sweets. You interested in doing some movies? Of course, as long as it's cheap and sleazy. <laughs> You're hired. Get in. Hey. Uh oh, looks like Candy's got a stalker. Better get the girls back to the station. Our studio pronto. Luckily, this guy is basically no threat to you. You can just kill him. <laughs> Problem solved, and then just drive off. Mission done. So, Dildo Dodo is next. This one isn't particularly complicated, but there is one section that makes it very tricky. The whole thing here is that the skimmer fuel starts off with less, and the checkpoints have been moved, so you need to do a slightly different pattern. 
But again, if you follow what I do, you shouldn't have too much trouble. This checkpoint right here is the tricky one. It is actually slightly above the height limit, so you would think that usually you wouldn't be able to gain enough altitude to get there. But you can technically temporarily push yourself beyond the height limit by going low and then pulling yourself up like that. If you were to slowly ascend, you wouldn't have enough height to get there. But if you kind of dive bomb and then pull yourself up, you can just about hit it. For Martha's Mugshot, I'd recommend grabbing the police heli because Candy and their limo driver drive extremely fast in this. So it's not really that long, boring auto scroller that you're used to. You can get some armor if you need it, but then otherwise just follow them to the usual place. 
Usually, if you are doing speedruns or you know how to cheese this mission, you might think that you want to land on the hotel roof. But the problem is that there are a bunch of guys guarding it. So, instead, you can either do the intended strat, which is, you know, actually go in the building and take the pictures from the top, but then you have to fight the way out, or all the way out, and that's just awful. Instead, we're going to do a little bit of out of bounds. So once Candy and her limo driver get to this section, head to this building here just before. It doesn't look like it, but you can actually land on the roof here. It has really weird collision that's mostly invisible, and we can use this to take the pictures. The roof collision here is surprisingly big, so you can get some good photos, but just keep in mind that you need to get a very specific angle, otherwise they won't work. And also, if the helicopter is blocking your shot, even though it doesn't look like it is, it might do because of the way the stupid hitboxes work. If that's the case, you can just move it the other way around like this and get out of the left side, and then you should be able to take the pictures from this angle just fine. There we go. Martha, now you can just hop in your helicopter and fly away. Now, remember when I said that Phnom Penh was one of the top three hardest missions? This is also in that top three. This mission is tough. But with a bit of PCJ shenanigans, you can make it work. There isn't really too many ways to cheese this mission. All the usual ways to cheese it, like using a helicopter and stuff to fly through, don't work. They've all been patched out deliberately. So you kind of have to do this the, the usual way. And you really don't have a lot of time. Plus the snow just makes it pretty tragic. But again, if you follow what I do, you should be okay.
Hey, where did he get that picture of me? So next up is Love Juice. We're doing the Love Fest missions now. I'd heavily recommend getting a car for this because he's not on a bike. He's actually in a car and he's pretty fast. So obviously if you're on a bike, he's in a car. You want to try and match him the best you can. So Stinger's pretty good. Needs something fairly fast. Looking for something special? I got what you need. Thanks for the money, sucker. And the easiest way to deal with this guy is you want to actually pit maneuver him and drag him out. You want to basically get him stuck because you can't blow up his car with him inside because if you do, then you'll fail the mission because you've like destroyed what what the uh, what is it the drugs or whatever. So instead, you just want to kind of run run into him like that, try and get him stuck, push him into alleyways and things like that, and eventually you'll be able to drag him out the car. Just be careful when you drag him out the car because he's a very dangerous man. When you finally catch him and drag him out, just be very careful as I said. Here I decided to do a bit of ring around the rosy and uh, yeah, this guy has a very powerful shotgun. I was very lucky I didn't die there. Yeah, so just watch out. Hey Mike, the guys could do with some company. You know what I mean? I know just the girl. Hey Mercedes. Hiya, Tommy. And how are you? Just fine. Listen. I'd recommend switching back to the PCJ when picking up Mercedes because this is basically just a long straight drive and the PCJ is usually the best one for the task. If you're very cool, you can do this cool little jump across. Just be careful because again, you're in snow, so. I don't remember if the snow is fixed in this, but whatever. Snow is a worst case scenario and you can still do this pretty easily, so.
I see you later, big boy. In this mission, the M60 is very much your friend. The psycho that you usually have to deal with in the Sentinel is now in a security car, and there's also one on the back that shoots you with a shotgun. And shotguns, as I said in this game, basically act as sniper rifles as well. So just watch out, but all you gotta do is kill them. So, onto the biker missions, as we can't finish the Love Fist missions without them. This one, you can't steal one of these guys' bike. Usually in the vanilla game, you can steal their bikes, and it actually has a- it's like a god bike, basically. It has, like, insane properties, and it's stupidly fast, it's really hard to fall off, has really good handling, turning, etc. You don't get that privilege this time, as they drive away right away. So instead, you just basically have to do the race the normal way with three stars, but it's really not too bad. Messing with the man is pretty much the same in terms of execution from the original. You want to use weak guns like the Uzi that you've farmed the ammo for on Guardian Angels. And just shoot cars, set them on fire, shoot other cars, shoot cops if you need to, anything that causes chaos basically. But the quickest way to increment the meter is just to shoot vehicles with weak weapons because that increments it really fast. Just be careful, because obviously you might have a high wanted level from the previous mission. You're welcome to reset it if you want to. But I deliberately kept my wanted level because obviously it allows a lot of a lot of cops and cop cars to spawn. So it's a really easy way to pass the mission. But it's quite risky. Next up is Hogtide, and um, this one is not too bad. The Mitch's Angel is in a different position, so I'll show you where that is shortly. There's also armor here, should you need it.
There's also some health just before you head down so you can get essentially a full heal. And as soon as you hop down, Mitch Baker's bike is actually right here in front of you. So you can just grab it and off you go. Publicity tour is, uh, it's, it's a real meme, let's say that. The big difference is that you have a very heavy drunk camera. So if you suffer from motion sickness, you might want to skip through this part. The strategy here is exactly the same. Keep just enough speed that you don't trigger the detonation sequence, but go slow enough so that you don't crash, and just drive around, head south, then east, then north, then west, around this square, and just keep doing that over and over again.
Now we're done with all the downtown side missions. We can start the other big story in Vice City, the other optional story, which uh, which is the Haitians versus Cubans storyline. This one isn't too bad. You just have less time than usual, and there is a set piece that slightly changes the mission, but it's very minimal. So just don't wait around too much and go as fast as you can. This is the set piece I was referring to, the big ship. We'll be coming back here later for another mission. But yeah, for now, you just need to jump over it. I almost died because of the weird ramp physics, but just about made it across. So, for Dirty Lickens, or excuse me, Juju Scramble, which is the first Haitian mission, I'd strongly recommend having a tall vehicle, such as an ambulance, that you can find in downtown. I'll explain why, or I'll show you why, in just a second. Don't try and be me and take a shortcut here, because there isn't one, it's just a dead end. This is why you brought the ambulance. You actually have like infinite time here because the other cops that would usually pick up these briefcases and fail the mission, he just can't get to this one. But yeah, hopping on the ambulance trivializes that part. Oh, no. 
Bombs away if you do it the intended way is extremely difficult because the guys with the boats drive really fast or pretty much faster than you do. So you can't really chase them down once they get away. But with some precise inputs, you can trivialize this entire mission. What you do is you get in the top fun van and as soon as you're able to exit, you mash the F key like here and you can actually get out of the van before you're before you basically, you're not, you're not intended to get out of that van at all during that mission, but it basically gives you free control. So you can just drive to Starfish Island and kill all the guys manually before they can escape. That's the wrong garden. It's the next one, whoops. Now we're on to Dirty Lickens, which is the final anti Pauley mission. This one is pretty short and sweet. The big difference is that the, the guys have much increased... They, they basically cheat a lot more than usual. They usually cheat in the vanilla game as well. But you could just use your M60 or your sniper rifle or anything like that to just mess these guys up. You don't have to use a sniper. And as soon as you're able to, you should blow up this van here because it's filled with dudes. And then just finish off the last couple of guys. And there's a load more on the bottom left. Kill these guys. These have weapons. So just take them out. Nice and easy. So back to the Cuban missions after Stone Boat Challenge. If you have a two star wanted level here, which you can do by robbing the cafe, you can actually get a free p police car nine times out of 10. For some reason, I didn't get one here. I don't know exactly how it works, but yeah. It's a, it's an, it's a nice little hack to get an easy four door car because you need one to pick up the Cubans. If you need help, there you can get a pizza right here. And as you're on mission one, there isn't even an animation to grab it. Just picks it up straight away for a free instant heal. Hey amigo, good to see you can make it. This stinking nest of hayseds, we gonna kill them all! 
So these gunfights are fairly straightforward, just heavily abuse the M60, blow up the stinger, kill these guys. As you can see, they have a lot of M60s as well, so it's only fair. The spear is the trickiest part, as you need to get that trash master out of the compound without it getting blown up, and all of these guys have M60s. So what I would recommend doing is just go on a complete nuking spree, try and get rid of all of them, and then push it physically with Tommy the best you can. As you can see, you can sometimes get screwed by the Cubans blocking you, but if you're in a pinch right here, you can get some health around here, as there's no like time limit for the for the mission or anything. So now just kill any other stragglers and then push the trust master around. If you try and drive it out, you'll never be able to turn it like this. So pushing it is way easier to get it, you know, basically to spin 180. This mission is pretty rough in vanilla. It's not too much worse in this one. We'll just need to do another little bit of PCJ parkour. If you need health or armor, just head a little bit past the first objective and there's armor there and there's health just on the east side underneath a broken little footbridge. And then we can go and see our boy Rico. Fuck you, Rico. So as soon as you gain control, the first thing you should do is spin an immediate 180 because there is actually a boat behind you full of dudes. Just grab the M60 and just nuke all the boats. Kill them all. Nice and easy. You'll spawn into a few guys' crosshairs, so just keep that in mind. It's pretty cheap. Kill the guys on the roof. Kill the guys at the front. Kill the guys on the left and right sides because they have shotguns. Just basically clear the entire area before moving on. Now you've grabbed those two briefcases, but the third one has actually been moved onto the roof. So this is what the PCJ is for. We need to do a little, little maneuver here to get up onto the roof. 
and then we can grab the briefcase and be on our merry way. At this point, the cops were annoying me so much, I just said fuck it to the PCJ because they were just kept knocking me off. So I just grabbed the police cheater instead. So, Trojan Voodoo is pretty easy. It's the final mission in this entire chain. You just need to grab a Voodoo card. There is a fixed one if you don't get lucky on the road like me. There is a fixed one just to the east side. If you need armor, you can grab it just in this little garden bit here. Well, it's not really a garden, but you know what I mean. Around the side of this car. Or house even. Fucking hell, Ben. I don't know if that M60 drop is a troll or what, but it didn't let me pick it up for whatever reason. And I was too lazy to test it to see if it was actually fake or not. But yeah, kill all the guys in this compound first because the timer doesn't start until you plant the first bomb. And the timer is very strict, so make sure you clear out this place first. Once you've planted all of them, the you'll have to get clear of the factory, and then the mission will say, are you sure you pointed them go, or planted them? Go back and check. Ignore that. It's just a dumb haha -ha, troll. If you go back, you'll just run out of time and fail the mission. So VIP is probably one of my favorite uh, missions in this mod. The first thing to note is that I'm pretty sure you have a little bit less time on this timer 
So don't dilly dally and get your ass over to Starfish Island ASAP. This is very standard, just damage the car enough so the guy gets out, and then if you want to, you can also blow it up afterwards so it doesn't chase after you. And as you can see, the blip to, or the destination to sort of take the, where you need to take the guy, is a completely different VIP, and it's also a completely different destination. So the guy has a sailor outfit, and we need to take him onto a ship. And the jump to get to the ship is very interesting, let me tell you. So I would heavily recommend switching away from the taxi and instead getting on the PCJ. There's a fixed one here near the Malibu Club. It's a lot easier to make the jump with the PCJ in my opinion, because if you end up making it in a car, you'll usually just like flip the car and fall off the boat that we need to ramp over to. I didn't do it in this playthrough, but if you want to and to make it a bit easier, you can get rid of the police, just go and like pay and spray or grab a bribe or something. It'll make it a bit easier, but I just went straight there and just sent it. This is the ramp here. You need a good amount of speed because otherwise you'll undershoot and land here. I just about undershot the first time. But it's a good example of what you can do if you make it to here and you're not able to get up again. There is actually a ramp that takes you back onto the bridge that you'll see here in a second. So you can try as many times as you like. Just err on the side of caution because if you overshoot, you will just go straight into the water. Whereas undershooting, you can recover it and just try again. So not doing the rest of the taxi missions just yet, you'll see why in a little bit. Instead, we're going to the penultimate, um, what's the word, assassination mission. For some reason, I wasn't able to pick this up. I assume it's the same bug as not being able to collect the M60, but you can usually grab that um, or, instead of using the chainsaw. But you can also just leave and pick up all your guns and use them from the outside, which is a lot easier. Nice one, Tommy. So you can use any weapon to take these guys out. Using the chainsaw is not really recommended. As you can see, the bodyguard has a stubby shotgun, which is kind of messed up. So just be very careful if you are going to go close quarters. Just make sure you don't get wrecked. So grab any escape vehicle you can find. It doesn't really matter. And take this route that I do, because if you've ever played this mission in vanilla, there's a trap waiting for you when you leave the airport the intended way with the roads. But if you go this way, not only is it quicker, but it also completely avoids any conflict with people chasing after you.
the four star police are kind of a pain in the ass. So again, if you're not going for speed, you can go to the east eastern road and go to the pain spray and get rid of them. But I just chose not to and to send it, which is pretty stupid. But you know, what's the fun in playing normally, right? So unlike the previous taxi mission VIP, you don't actually need a Kalpman cab for this. And we're actually going to do something really specific in this mission. So you, if you have a faster vehicle once you start the mission, I'd recommend using it. There is one taxi here that you need to keep an eye on. So we're going to destroy these guys as normal. Just be careful because they have a, a guy on the back. But this one here, this zebra cab, if you want to do a really cool thing in this next mission to essentially skip the next mission, I would recommend... Instead of blowing this up like you're supposed to, shooting the driver out and actually stealing it, as you see that I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to snipe the guy out like that. And then store this in a garage for later. As this was the first vehicle I got, I don't think I went and installed it right away. I think what I did instead is I just used this as my vehicle of choice to take out the other two guys and then stored it later. But you'll see what I mean. For the meantime, just take out these other two guys they're not really a big threat. You can just nuke them with the M60 or snipe the guys out the back with the M4. Whichever whichever is easier for you. So now once all you've got left is this car that you need to destroy, you need to go to your nearest garage. So whether you have a safe house for the garage or I'm going to Sunshine Autos, the asset, because it has a lot of garages, whichever one works, just make sure that you have something purchased and then head to the garage. What we're going to do with this vehicle is we're actually going to destroy it inside of the garage. And what that is going to do is it's going to pass the mission because the thing has been exploded, right? It's been destroyed. But then because the corpse is in the garage, once we reopen the garage, it will actually give us a fresh model of that car, as you can see. And we're going to use it for the final mission, Cab Mageddon. So if you have this specific Zebra Cab from the previous mission, as you can see, there's a number on top, which you might realize is the, the car 13, which is what was asked for specifically um, by Mercedes canonically in the mission. So yeah, if you take this car and drive it all the way down, you'll get an interesting little secret ending to the mission. And that's it, mission complete. Obviously, this isn't the intended way to do the mission at all, so if you don't have the Zebra Cab and you want to do the mission, or you just want to just fully experience it the way it's intended to be, you know, no secret skip endings or anything, I'll show you how to do it as well. Hmm, no sign of Mercedes. So this one is pretty tight. As you can see, there is a ton of guys with a ton of guns. 
immediately, once you gain control, drive all the way south, pull up against this fence that is actually put there to stop you jumping over it. But use your, use your car, jump on top of it, and just make sure you don't drown or get shot or anything. Then you can just chill here and blow these guys up, and it will essentially create a huge chain reaction. And you can just destroy all these guys. You can wait out the timer if you want to. The mission should continue anyway. At least they do in vanilla. Or you can just blow them up, whichever one. Obviously, it's a bit faster to blow them all up than it is to wait for 30 seconds. This guy, if you've played this mission in vanilla, is never really a threat. His AI is kind of fucked. So all you need to do is just snipe the guy on top so he doesn't shoot you, snipe the driver out, and you're good to go. So after that gigantic, like, hour-long detour, we're finally doing uh, <laughs> back to Vesetia State, you know, intended story missions, really. Because these are all just kind of like side assets, but this is actually this is actually a mandatory mission. Barbara is a pretty fun mission, I'm not going to lie, in this mod. First bit of advice for you, be very careful when dealing with these guys. As you can see, they actually have stubby shotguns, so... Just abuse the fact that you've got an M60 and abuse the fact that you can kind of shoot them over the wall. And yeah, try not to get wrecked. And then this next section is pretty standard. You can just blow them all up or kill them with the M60. Don't get stuck on a tree like I did or your own bumper. But then the sort of big change for the ending is that number one, once you spawn in the final set of guys, the timer doesn't stop. So you're on quite a tight time limit for this. But not only that, but also... They actually have deluxos instead of bikes. So I did my best to try and get a PCJ here and keep it up. But yeah, just throw some grenades here. If you don't get a PCJ, it's not really a big deal. I ended up getting wanted level for shooting the guy off the PCJ, which was dumb because then, you know, the cops are annoying me. But yeah, see these guys spawn in deluxos. With any luck, you'll have your M60 there. And if you crouch in that cutscene, you actually don't move in it. So you can have a really good position to just straight up kill those guys with the M60 and just nuke them. Okay, Lance, let's get the cops attention. So next up is Copland. And if you remember all the way back when, you see I'm driving east here, but in reality, the our objective is to the west, which I quickly quickly realize I'm too used to playing to too used to playing vanilla. But yeah, the usual place that you would go to for Say Yes Sir, as I think I described before, it's been a while since I recorded the Say Yes Sir segment. But yeah, the garages are reversed. So you use the Copland garage for Say Yes Sir, and now we're using the Say Yes Sir garage for Copland. So we need to head back to the Say Yes Sir garage. And we need to get a wanted level on the way. The easiest way to get a two-star wanted level to get the cops to spawn is just to rob the... I think it's like a laundromat, I think it is. Which is just to the east here. Oh, sorry, to the west. But yeah, so that's that's the garage there. And then you just head north and then west onto this corner. And the laundromat is right here for you. And all you need to do is walk in and shoot your gun. No clue what I'm doing here. <laughs> Walk in and shoot your gun, and that will immediately count as like a robbery, and that will give you two stars, which is just enough for the the guys to spawn in. You need a two star wanted level or higher. If you don't, these guys, these scripted spawns won't spawn in. But yeah, just pull into the garage and wait for them to spawn. Tie him up and gag him. Ooh, fits perfectly. Fit tight around the crotch, though. Oh yeah, yeah, mine too, mine too. So 
So now we need to go all the way to the mall, which is quite a long drive. So instead, we're going to fly. And then we're also going to fly back because flying back is trivial when you have six stars or whatever you get in this mission. Copland is same in vanilla. It's very trivialized by using a helicopter. So again, we don't have access to the VCN use heli because it's not there in this mod. So instead, we're just going to go to the downtown police station and take the police helicopter from there. Once you arrive at the mall, if you're a speedrunner, do not park in the usual place. If you're not a speedrunner, just follow what I do and park on the east side. Because if you park on the western side of these doors, then there will be a, another set of cops that spawn there, which have really heavy weapons, and they will despawn your helicopter. So this is a fake mission fail. You haven't actually failed the mission. It's just a little troll. So you still just run as normal and ignore that mission failed text. And then yeah, six stars. Always a good amount of fun. Run out, head east, and kill any cops that are on the helicopter as otherwise they'll arrest you when you try and take off. And then get the hell out of there and fly back. So next up is the Malibu Club. We saved this until a little bit later because it's a very expensive asset and I didn't have enough money for it until fairly recently in the playthrough. So obviously do the same, collect your money from the assets and stuff, do other missions because Malibu is pretty expensive and it's pretty tricky, but we'll, we'll make a decent amount, decent amount of money back as well. So grab the armor if you need it, and grab the PCJ from around the corner. The same one that you just grabbed for, what mission was it? Uh, VIP was what you grabbed it for. So yeah, same PCJ, same spawn location. Grab it, and let's bus come out of prison. But first, we need to go to a very particular place, because the key card is actually in a different spot Put in here. So you can grab the cop uniform to stop the police being, you know, too pissed off with you. But as you can see, you grab it, and it actually goes, oh wait, the key card used to be in here, where could it be? And as long as you have the cop uniform, I'm going to tell you where it is anyway, but, you know, for completion's sake, if you grab the cop uniform, there's actually another marker on the map, as you can see, that tells you where the key card is, and it's up on the roof. Now, you don't need to get the police uniform, I could just tell you where it is, and you could go and grab it without that knowledge. But, it's nice to have the police uniform, just to say, for completion's sake. So, head up here and go across exactly where we went to for death row. I don't know why I chose those stairs, it's much easier to go up the other ramps, but whatever. And just go across, and the key card is sat right over here. You'll get a wanted level as soon as you pick it up, because the police think you're weird for being up on the roof. So you'll get a wanted level anyway, but yeah, the rest of this mission is fairly simple. Cam Jones? Yeah, that's me. I'm busting you out. Whatever you say. On the way out, I would recommend killing as many people as possible, because obviously they might shoot Cam or kill you, and they can be kind of annoying. As you can see, this that cop just did like 100 damage to me point blank. So yeah, just kill these guys, don't take that risk, and then get the hell out of there. 
Cam follows the same sort of AI manipulation tactics as Lance does. If you remember all the way back in Death Row when we talked about those. At least I think I did. Again, it's been a while since I recorded that segment. But if I didn't, you just hold sprint to make them sprint after you. If you don't, they will just kind of jog and get lost and stuff. So always make sure you're holding your sprint key, even if you're not sprinting yourself. And then get your acid to pain spray to get rid of the police. So that's pretty much mission done, but you're not fully out of the woods yet because as you can see, there is one final quite large obstacle. Technically, you could just go around, I'm pretty sure, but every time I've done this mission, there's always been traffic which has knocked these things out of the way for me, which has allowed me to just about squeeze through as you can see here. So maybe you'll get lucky like I do, or maybe it's not really a luck thing at all and it always happens. Here comes the traffic. But yeah, you can just kind of ram your way through eventually, and yeah, I've never really had an issue with this. Or, if you're an absolute boy, you can just push them, even though they're on fire, and then get into a vehicle which stops you from burning and makes the car take, or the bike, take the damage instead. Whichever works, you can go around if you're a pussy. So, next up is probably the most infamous, infamous, infamous mission in this mod. As you can see, you get a teleport now. If you've seen my video about the hardest Vi uh, Vice City mission or GTA mission ever made, you will know that on release, on version, well, not on release, on version 1.2 when this mission was buffed, it took me over five hours of attempts to do this fucking mission. Thankfully now, it's been nerfed since. It is still pretty difficult, but it's not nearly as hard as it once was. So I'll tell you how all three of the rounds work so you can get the maximum amount of points. And then, yeah, it's mostly just aim and practice from there. So in this mod, you have minimal time in each round. So don't skip any rounds. Try and get the maximum amount of, you know, points as possible. For round one, you should be focusing almost exclusively on target number three, as that's, what's gives you the mo that's what gives you the most points. So shoot number three, number two, and then number three again. Shoot number one, but just to get the ones out of the way from blocking you. Then number two, number three, number three again, so on and so forth. You should be able to get between 17 and 20 points-ish. I'm not that good at aiming, so if you're good, you can get way more. Round two is pretty simple. It's just one shot, you know, one point per shot. So it's just purely an aim test. And this you can get quite a lot of points if you're decent. So obviously the targets only respawn once you shoot them. So there's not really a lot to this. Just kind of keep it on a cycle. Once one spawns, shoot it, so on and so forth. Just kind of keep your wrist going in like an ever moving, you know, kind of slow roll. And yeah, like I got 37 points there, so I only need four to proceed. Round three is fucking bullshit. The spawns are completely random. But the way round three works is they spawn in groups of three and only a new set will spawn once the, once the three are off the map. So if it seems like there's like no targets on the map and you can't shoot them, it probably means that one of them has spawned in either the left window there or the right window. So just make sure that you shoot it because otherwise it'll take forever to go across from the window and then back again. And obviously you don't have enough time to wait for them to go back and forth. But yeah, you should be able to pass this if you have decent aim. If not, go and play some CSGO or something and come back. You'll be fine. You want to do me a favor and help me put together a job? Son, after shooting like that, if you ask me to be your wife, I'd say yes. 
So this next question can be kind of ass, admittedly, the driver. It's already hard enough as it is in vanilla, but in this turn, uh, uh, well, in this version, you can't really cheese it at all. So usually you just like pick a faster car and switch out. Now you're completely locked in your vehicle. You get three stars, I think, instead of two. And also your vehicle is already heavily damaged. So it basically is just a coin flip. Like if the police decide to ram into you, like as you can see, I'm already smoking. If the police decide to ram into you and kill you, there's not really a lot you can do to stop them. But yeah, just drive the best you can. It might take a couple of tries, so make sure you make a save beforehand. And just keep ramming your head against the wall. Eventually, Hillary will crash, and the cops will be nice, and you'll make it through. I believe in you. for you, but please treat me bad. Oh boy, time for the worst mission in the game by a country mile. Even in vanilla, this mission fucking sucks. It's nice that they all spawn in the vehicle, so you don't have to do that like little five second, you know, jiggery pokery where they're all getting in the car. That's one benefit, I guess. But yeah, this mission sucks. There's so many fucking unskippable cutscenes and sequences. And then at the end, it's just like, lol, five star wanted level or whatever. Hit, try and escape from the police with two people who are completely useless as your AI teammates. And if one of them dies, you're donezo. Like, Cam can die, but if Phil dies, the mission's over. And yeah, it's just shit. But yeah, there's a lot of people in very tricky locations. I'll show you where they all are once we get there. And so you just kind of need to have your wits about you. Check all your corners, as Captain Price would say. And don't miss the marker, because that's a little bit embarrassing. Keep driving around the block, okay? Okay, Tommy, okay. So make sure you hold sprint here across the street because these guys can get randomly ran over by traffic as they cross, which is fucking awesome. This is a raid! Nobody move! Everybody up against that wall! Phil, hold down the fort. Wilco, roger that. Come on, Cam, the vault's upstairs. So as soon as you gain control, head under this roof, because you can see, you, as you can see, you're in a kind of precarious position there. There's a dude there up top, which you need to kill. There's a guy here, and there's a dude here as well on the left. There's a guy here, close quarters on the left. Most of these guys have pretty overpowered weapons, so just be careful, like M4s and stuff. There's a guy here. 
I don't know why he just stands there, but I thought I'd come back and kill him. One, to show you where he is, and two, just to make sure, you know, he might end up killing you at some point, so just be careful. Don't face tank that guy. Not a great idea. But yeah, a couple of guys in the corners here as well. Get into the, the lift. And there's a couple more dudes that you got to deal with here before you get to the first so you can switch cam. So that guy's normal. The second guy on the left isn't. If you sprint into this marker, you'll get this funny cutscene where Cam is appearing to give a uh, little something something to Tommy. It's very funny. Assure I can assure you it's hilarious. I'm an adult. I pay taxes. Yeah. Now we just need to go and get the manager. There isn't any more kind of ass spawns here. You can just run and get the manager straight away and take him upstairs. Again, make sure you're holding sprint to make sure the manager chases after you because there's a chance he can get stuck. And if you enter that lift cutscene without him behind you, you can soft lock, which is, again, great. Might as well give up now. Hell, I can bypass the time lock. Then we just need your key code and we're good. Stay here. You try anything and you're dead. I'm going to check on Phil. I'll be right back. I told you not to touch that alarm! So this goes as normal, the alarm goes off because someone presses it or whatever. You need to be stood here to trigger the next section where the SWAT come in. As soon as you gain control, I'd recommend running back because you're in like a really horrible position here. You have like no cover and you'll just get wrecked. So I would recommend running back behind that, you know, little panel behind Tommy there. And then you can peek out and take these guys out one by one. I don't know exactly how this trigger works regarding, like, being able to leave, but I know that you don't have to kill everyone that spawns here, because I've had it before where I've been able to trigger it after just killing a couple. But as soon as you get the trigger and you're mostly safe, just get the hell out of there. And then this is the, you know, the best part where you've got to deal with all the cops. It's really fun. And Hillary has this very epic death scene. So, again, it's important to remember that Cam can die here. It doesn't matter too much. And as you can see, your taxi's on fire, so that's not really going to help you. You could try and get into one of those enforcers. It would give you armor. And you can also pay, pay and spray emergency vehicles in this. But I would recommend just killing everyone here so you don't get wrecked. Blowing up all the vehicles and stuff. You see, there's even cops here, which are really annoying. And doing your best to just ditch the people and get rid of the police. And then you can come back for your friends. That's usually a good way of doing it, because once you get to a point where you've lost them like this, where it says, you know, go back and get Phil, you've lost them, blah, 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 then honestly, it doesn't really matter, because they'll just stand there, and all the police will be after you. Now, I should have stayed in that enforcer. I didn't know at the time that you could pay and spray emergency vehicles, but you can. So if you can get into an enforcer or an FBI rancher or something like that, then just take it and pay and spray it because you would be fine. The only reason why I'm struggling here is because I didn't know that you can pay and spray emergency vehicles until, you know, much after. Luckily, I got a nice little box fill or whatever the hell this is right outside the pay and spray, a Yankee even. So I pay and sprayed that instead. But yeah, you should be better as long as you do as I say and not as I do. Once the police are mostly dealt with, go and pick up Phil. You can tell who he is because of his long hair. You don't have to give a shit about Cam if you don't want to. I certainly didn't because I just wanted to be done with this piece of shit mission. And yeah, just drive to the end and you're out of this hell. Congratulations. Mercedes? Yeah, I'm a little tense. 
What'd I tell you, Tommy? What'd I tell you? Oh, Ben's swap better watch shit. out when Kemp Paul is in town. Come on, give me a bigger slice, mate. Come on, I've got me some new friends. So, back to mandatory missions now. This is the first Printworks mission, Spilling the Beans. This is a good one. I, I enjoy it quite a lot. There's a couple of secrets which will make this mission far easier on you, which I will show you. Again, same principle as No Escape. You're here at the Malibu. There's armor if you need it. I'm going to show you where to get health and stuff later as well, because I needed some health after the job. And grab the PCJ because we're going cross map, so PCJ is the best thing for the job. So once you get your ass all the way down to the docks, there is actually a secret on the left near the water here, which I'll show you in just a second. But if you do need health, you can grab armor in the usual place, and there's also health here. As you can see, the bridge that you would normally run up is actually broken down, so we need to find a different way on. You can take the other bridge and fight these dudes, but they have pretty difficult weapons, so instead, I'd recommend going this way. There is a guy here who's kind of like, a, you know, a show to say like, yo, look over here, There's, there might be something interesting. And he's guarding a coast guard, which might not seem particularly useful, but then as you see there, there is a handy dandy shipping container, which actually acts as a ramp. And if you're familiar with how exiting boats works, you can actually teleport onto this shipping container by using the little teleport. Or you can just hop on, as you can see I teleported there. If you're not sure on how that works, basically if you're near a jetty and you exit a boat and you hit the water, the game will do its best to teleport you onto the jetty to stop you from drowning. Because there's no easy way to exit boats in this game. But yeah, so just kill these guys uh, with the M60s. Watch out for the guys with grenades. Pick up the M60 ammo, you might as well farm it while you're here. There's a guy around this corner sometimes, so watch out. Sometimes he's there, sometimes he isn't, so I always just check. Don't get stuck on the stairs like a dumbass. Kill this guy. Again, you can always just abuse the fact that you can kind of shoot people through walls. There's a guy up here on your left, and then there's a guy up here on the right hand side as well. Take them out, and you're good to go. After the epic dialogue, you can just jump right off. And as you saw, I tactically flung my PCJ down here before to hopefully get it in a decent position so I could use it to leave. Wasn't in the best position, but you can grab anything here. It doesn't really matter. The PCJ is obviously just faster. Now, make sure that you pay and spray, because if you go back with three stars in this mission, you'll actually fail the mission. So this is not the way to the pay and spray. Just go straight north on the road. No clue what I'm doing here. I don't remember. Maybe I was like demonstrating something on my stream or something like that. But yeah, just go all the way north. Try not to get too confused. Do as I say, not as I do, the classic. And go straight to the pain spray. Yeah, because if you go back without failing, uh, sorry, without getting rid of your wanted level, you'll fail the mission. And the same with the next one as well. So keep that in mind. So, Hit the Courier is pretty much the same mechanically. It's just basically the same mission, but on steroids. As you'll see, the ladies have much superior weapons. So, we'll need to deal with them cautiously while we go and grab the, uh, the plates. So 
So again, as mentioned before, there's armor and health here in the usual spots if you need them. I just grabbed armor because I'm pretty much fine on health. And I would heavily recommend staying in your vehicle when you start aggroing these ladies. Because then it will take a lot of the damage for you. I decide to try and face tank it. It's not the best idea, but you can do it. And just, you know, hold left click with the M60 and just go for these. Those ladies up there have snipers in the original. I'm not sure what they have in this one. I think it might also be snipers. So yeah, just watch out because you can see they have a lot of uh, damage at their disposal. Another sniper up there. There's one on the right hand side around this corner. Yeah, they do have snipers. And then there's one up there as well. Just clear them out and then we can take out the helicopter. Pretty simple. Once the helicopter lands, you can kill the lady with the chips. I killed the wrong person here. It's actually the lady on the left, so I almost lost her because I'm a dumb fuck. So, again, you should probably focus on the actual target rather than the other lady for some reason. But, yeah. Here, make sure you pain spray. You have four stars, so instead of driving all the way to the pain spray up north, I'd highly recommend, as much as it looks like it's not a great idea <laughs> with how risky that was, but, yeah, it's usually not too bad. Uh, get to this pain spray because it's a lot closer. They fucking pop my tire at the last second, which is very annoying. But yeah, just scrape your way into the pain spray and then you're home free. For some odd reason, this final mission marker in Titan Vice is absolutely massive, so you can trigger it from like 800 yards away, but yeah, once you trigger it, print work's done. So, time for the final payphone assassination mission. I wouldn't recommend doing this with 79 health. It's pretty risky. I'd recommend getting some armor for this because it's quite a big shootout. But mechanically, it's pretty basic. It's just all the guys have big fuck off guns and there's more of them, I think. So just take your time. Use your M60. I actually ended up using a sniper rifle here for quite a lot of it because I took a lot of damage and I didn't want to die. There are some health pickups that I'll show you later on. So from memory, there's usually an armor spawn in the southeastern corner in vanilla, but as you can see, it's not there. But the health pickup here is still there, so you can grab that if you need it. The twist at the end here is, as you can see, the helicopter is immediately on fire. 
So unless you know of a glitch to extinguish the fire, or an exploit rather, which I'm not going to show you because this is like a glitchless walkthrough, um, we've got six stars and we've got to figure it out. So what I would recommend doing is heading all the way down and just sprinting immediately to the police cheetah, which I'll show you the location of, and then you can use that to pay and spray and be on your merry way. Once you've pain sprayed, that's the mission done with. There's nothing else, no tips or tricks or anything that you need to learn. Just get to the airport and end the mission. So, onto the final few missions. If you come to Phil's place for Gunrunner, you can actually see a cool little Easter egg, which is me. I got placed in this mod as a result of my whole five hour fiasco for doing the shootest on the hardest patch and this is my this is my reward to be forever commemorated my my torment is always you know for everyone to laugh at but yeah gunrunner is pretty simple there's not really too much to it in vanilla it's pretty tough in this it's not that much different so if you can com if you're confident in vanilla in this mission you'll be fine if not just follow what i do You can use the remote grenades given to you on this mission if you want to. They were just back in Phil's place, but I prefer to use either a sniper rifle or a Spaz-12 or whatever I have, M60. And you can just snipe these guys from afar so they're not really a threat to you. And then for this final set of guys, just drive past them. They might wreck you because of the snow and the cops and the pop tires and everything. But yeah, just drive past them and then just destroy them as they come past. Because of the cops wrecking me, I actually ended up almost losing this second guy, but he uh, thankfully came towards me at the end. And then yeah, just grab the... Gra grab the... Uh, <laughs> I was just laughing at the golf carts. Avoid the goon squad in the golf carts, grab the final weapon, and yeah, good to go. On to Phil's final mission. So there isn't really much to this one, besides you can see the, the weather. The police are already on to you, so you already start with two stars. Your car is damaged, and also you have a drunk camera, but you know, you usually have that anyway, I think. Yeah, you do. So there isn't too much to this, just try not to get wrecked by the police. You can probably pay and spray if you want to, but I usually don't bother. And the twist at the end, which can get you, you know, arrested if you're not careful, is that Phil has a bunch of dialogue lines that he says, like on a timer, and you can't actually trigger the end of the mission until he says, well, until he says, it, like, God, I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this, excuse me. If he's talking, while you're trying to end the mission, you've got to wait until that dialogue line finishes before you can then actually finish the mission. And the twist in this is that he plays all of his audio lines back to back. So if you're sat in the marker, obviously then he'll play a ton of dialogue lines. So you might get arrested. So just be careful. In this attempt, he didn't do that. But I swear to you, every other time I've done this mission, he's done that with the whole audio lines thing. So... I don't know if I'm going insane and gaslighting myself, but it's worth mentioning that you should look out for it just in case it happens to you. 
That's my cope, anyway. So, final two missions. How exciting. You should have access to these because you've completed enough assets throughout the game. If not, do some more. <laughs> Make sure you do, like, the pole position and things like that as well. But yeah, the Mafia is taxing your businesses. Get your ass down to the boatyard because that's where they're heading to, assuming that you own it. Get your ass down there as soon as possible. You have fixed snow, and these guys have... There's a lot of them. There's like seven or eight of them. I don't know how they fit in a four-seater Sentinel, but that's beyond the point. And they have a huge amount of guns, so just be very careful when you go to shoot them. So for this first set, I very much like to let them all run to the boatyard like this and then shoot them all down in a, in a line when they're far enough away that they can't mess me up. I'd also recommend pay and spraying in between these guys because these guys aren't going to go around the map and tax your businesses now. As long as they didn't tax the boatyard, they're going to keep coming to the boatyard. So they're going to be driving right towards you. So you're basically just waiting for them. You can hunt them down if you want to, but they're coming right towards you. And you know, this isn't a speedrun or anything. So we may as well take that time to get rid of the police, which is just another annoyance that we can, you know, negate. And then we can slowly make our way towards them, blow them up with the M60, pay and spray, blow them up with the M60. Enjoy this lovely traffic, just getting blown up. Classic American traffic. And yeah, suspicion isn't too bad from this point on. Final mission time. How exciting. So this mission is tough. I would heavily recommend as soon as you gain control, run out into this back left corner and crouch here. Because this is like the only place that you are not going to take a ton of damage. And as you will see, pretty much all of these guys have stubby shotguns, which will stun lock you. Because they have the stupid thing where they usually NPCs, if they knock you down, they won't keep shooting you. But these guys don't have that little, you know, like, you know, stun lock player equals zero or whatever programming term there is. I don't know what the term is. But yeah, they're basically told to just be assholes and infinitely stun lock you to death. So they'll shoot you on the floor once you're down. You know, they'll do half your health and then do the other half while you're on the floor and you can't defend yourself. Then in the second half, a bunch of them have grenades too. And they are just completely fucking petrifying. So, yeah. Just watch out for any guys that spawn on the left-hand side because they can spawn through that corridor there. And obviously then they will be able to shoot you. But the guys downstairs won't be able to. So you don't need to care about defending the safe until it tells you to there because that means that Lance has spawned. Again, make sure you kill any guys just to be safe. But you don't need to actually run out of running, worry about running out of money because it's pretty unlikely that you will. As soon as you gain control after Lance, walk to the left here. And you can actually snipe Lance from far away, and that will skip the entire section where he flies away in a helicopter. Because in this mod, if I didn't already mention, he flies away in a helicopter, and you have to grab, like, the Sea Sparrow behind the mansion and blow him up. It's a really cool sequence, but this is a really easy way to deal with it instead. You can just snipe him before he does that with the M60, and now you can just wait until the end of the mission, which is in 60 seconds' time. So as soon as you get another thing that says, like, go and defend the safe in a minute, I don't know if there is text actually, but just wait a minute and then go back to the stairs and you'll see Sonny. He's obviously quite highly defended. So do your best to take him out. And yeah, that's you done.
It took 15 years for me, Sonny, and now I'm gonna make you pay. You still don't get it, do you? I own you, Tommy. Those 15 years were mine to spend. Get him, boys. He never understood a thing. First and foremost, congratulations on completing every single mission in GTA Titan Vice. It's definitely not an easy mod, and if you've played Titan thrice before, you'll, you know, it's very much down the similar length in terms of difficulty. So yeah, it's it's an impressive achievement. I'm proud of you. I'm sure, you know, your parents, your kids, your wife, your family, your friends, your dog, they're all proud of you too. So congratulations, you did it. I hope you found it useful or enjoyable and if you have any questions or anything like that, of course, feel free to leave a comment. And I appreciate you all sticking out with me because these are quite long tutorials usually. But yeah, I'll leave you to enjoy the final section. Sadly, the song at the end is copyrighted, so that's not going to be in this video. But if you haven't seen it yet, it's quite good. You can look it up on YouTube, I'm sure. I won't spoil it for you. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. See you later. Does that mean what I think it means? Tommy, baby! What do you think it means? That we're in charge. I mean, I mean that you're in charge. Oh, Tommy! You know, Ken, I think this could be the beginning of a beautiful business relationship. After all, you're a conniving, backstabbing, two-bit thief, and I'm a convicted psychotic killer and drug dealer. <laughs> I know. Ain't it just beautiful?